Paget's disease, what a strange disease. Introduction Sir James Paget, 1st Baronet, born January 11, 1814, Great Yarmouth, Norfolk, Eng. Died December 30, 1899, London, British surgeon and surgical pathologist. Working at St. Bartholomew's Hospital, London, 1834-71, Paget discovered, 1834, in human muscle the parasitic worm that causes trichinosis. Paget was a professor of anatomy and surgery, 1847-52 and was later vice president, 1873-74 and president, 1875, of the Royal College of Surgeons. He rendered excellent descriptions of breast cancer, an early indication of breast cancer known as Paget's disease, 1874, an inflammatory cancerous condition around the nipple in elderly women, and Paget's disease of bone, 1877, a bone inflammation also known as osteitis deformans. Also named for him is Paget's abscess, one recurring about the remains of a former abscess. He was one of the first to recommend surgical removal of bone marrow tumors, myeloid sarcoma, instead of amputation of the limb. The case that he described was that of a military gentleman who had been his patient for more than 20 years and eventually had died of a malignancy in the radius. When the patient had been first seen, it was because of deformity in the left tibia. Over the next 17 years of his life, the disease continued to progress slowly. The left femur and tibia became larger, heavier, and somewhat more curved. Very slowly the bones of the right limb followed the same course. The skull became gradually larger so that nearly every year his hat needed to be enlarged. From a height of 6 apostrophe 1 he sank to about 5 apostrophe 9. The attitude in standing was described as looking simian, strangely in contrast with the large head and handsome features. A condition of abnormal bone remodeling. Original osseous tissue is reconstructed through active interplay between excessive bone resorption and abnormal new bone formation. Paget's disease of the bone is a common, chronic bone disorder characterized by excessive abnormal bone remodeling. The classically described radiological appearances are expanded bone with a coarsened trabecular pattern. The pelvis, spine, skull, and proximal long bones are most frequently affected. Pathophysiology Increased osteoclastic bone resorption is the primary cellular abnormality. Cause is thought to be a slow virus infection, intranuclear nucleocapsid. Like structure Paramyxovirus Respiratory syncytial virus Epidemiology It is relatively common and can affect up to 4% of individuals over 40 and up to 11% over the age of 80. There may be a slight male predilection. Incidence can be considerably higher in the United Kingdom than in other countries. It is also common in Australia, New Zealand, Western Europe, and the United States. Epidemiology Peak incidence in the fifth decade of life Common in Caucasians, Northern European, Anglo-Saxon descent Males equals females Location May be monostotic or polyostotic Common sites include femur greater than pelvis greater than tibia greater than skull greater than spine. Orthopedic manifestations Bone pain Long bone bowing Fractures, due to brittle bone and tend to be transverse. Large joint osteoarthritis Excessive bleeding during total hip arthroplasty Malalignment during total knee arthroplasty, secondary sarcoma. Clinical presentation. The majority, approximately three quarters, of patients are asymptomatic at the time of diagnosis. Presenting symptoms include localized pain and tenderness, increased focal temperature due to hyperemia, due to hypervascularity, 
increased bone size, historically changing hat size was a giveaway. Bind deformities. Kyphosis of the spine. Decreased range of motion. Signs and symptoms relating to complications, see below. Polyostotic disease is more prevalent than the monostotic type 1. The most frequent sites of involvement are Spine Pelvis, often asymmetric Skull Proximal long bones Clinical presentation Associated conditions High output heart failure Prognosis and malignancy Paget's sarcoma Less than 1% will develop malignant Paget's sarcoma, secondary sarcoma. Osteosarcoma greater than fibrosarcoma and chondrosarcoma. Most common in pelvis, femur, and humerus. Poor prognosis. Five-year survival for metastatic Paget's sarcoma less than 10%. Treatment includes chemotherapy and wide surgical resect. Classification Phases Lytic phase Intense osteoclastic resorption Mixed phase Resorption and compensatory bone formation Sclerotic phase Osteoblastic bone formation Predominates All three phases may coexist in the same bone Presentation symptoms Asymptomatic Frequently asymptomatic and found incidentally Pain Pain may be the presenting symptom due to stress fractures Increased vascularity and warmth New intense pain and swelling Suspicious for Paget's sarcoma in a patient with history of Paget's plus new intense pain and swelling Cardiac symptoms Can present with high output cardiac failure particularly if large slash multiple lesions and pre-existing diminished cardiac function Imaging Radiographs Coarsened trabeculae which give the bone a blastic appearance Both increased and decreased density may exist depending on phase of disease Lytic phase Loosened areas with expansion and thinned, intact cortices. Blade of grass or flame-shaped loosened advancing edge. Mixed phase. Combination of lysis plus sclerosis with coarsened trabeculae. Sclerotic phase, bone enlargement with cortical thickening, sclerotic and loosened areas. Plain radiograph. The early phase features osteolytic, Lucent region which is later followed by coarsened trabeculae and bony enlargement. Sclerotic changes occur much later in the disease process. Skull Osteoporosis circumscriptor, large, well-defined lytic lesion. Cotton wool appearance, mixed lytic and sclerotic lesions of the skull. Diploic widening, both inner and outer calvarial tables are involved with the former usually more extensively affected. tam sign, frontal bone enlargement, with the appearance of the skull falling over the facial bones, like a tam hat. All appearance, notice the radiograph. Mixed lytic and sclerotic lesions of the skull. Plain radiograph. The early phase features osteolytic, lucent, region which is later followed by coarsened trabeculae and bony enlargement. Sclerotic changes occur much later in the disease process. Skull Osteoporosis circumscriptor, large, well-defined lytic lesion. Cotton wool appearance, mixed lytic and sclerotic lesions of the skull. Diploic widening, both inner and outer calvarial tables are involved with the former usually more extensively affected. tam sign, frontal bone enlargement, with the appearance of the skull falling over the facial bones, like a tam hat. Clinical 
clinical radiograph of a skull. Note the large, circular lytic defect involving the posterior half of the skull. Some patchy osteoblastic reaction in the bone around the defect can also be seen. This lesion, osteoporosis circumscriptor, is a relatively common radiologic presentation of Paget's disease. Spine Picture frame sign, Paget disease of the spine frequently manifests with cortical thickening and sclerosis encasing the vertebral margins, which gives rise to this appearance on radiographs in mixed phase disease. Squaring of vertebrae, on lateral radiographs, flattening of the normal concavity of the anterior margin of the vertebral body also adds to the rectangular appearance. Vertical trabecular thickening, coarser than the more delicate pattern seen in interosseous hemangiomas with which it may be confused. Radiograph of the lumbar spine in a 66-year-old man shows enlargement of L4 with coarsening of the trabecular pattern and a margin sclerosis, the so-called picture framing characteristic of Paget's disease. Courtesy of Dr. Alex Norman. Pelvis. Cortical thickening and sclerosis of the iliopectineal and ischiopubic lines. Acetabular protrusion. Enlargement of the pubic rami and ischium. These findings are often asymmetric, and for some reason, are more commonly seen on the right side. Case courtesy of Dr. Kashif Nadine Leacut, Radiopedia.org, ID. 29,808 Long bones Blade of grass or candle flame sign begins as a subchondral area of lucency with advancing tip of V-shaped osteolysis extending towards the diaphysis. In rare cases, the disease is isolated to the diaphysis most commonly in the tibia rather than subchondral bone which can cause diagnostic confusion. Lateral curvature, bowing, of the femur. Anterior curvature of the tibia. Case courtesy of Dr. Derek Smith, radiopedia.org, RID, 40489. Long bones. Blade of grass or candle flame sign, begins as a subchondral area of lucency with advancing tip of V-shaped osteolysis, extending towards the diaphysis. In rare cases, the disease is isolated to the diaphysis, most commonly in the tibia, rather than subchondral bone, which can cause diagnostic confusion. Lateral curvature, bowing, of the femur. Anterior curvature of the tibia. Long bones. Blade of grass or candle flame sign begins as a subchondral area of lucency with advancing tip of V-shaped osteolysis, extending towards the diaphysis. In rare cases, the disease is isolated to the diaphysis, most commonly in the tibia, rather than subchondral bone, which can cause diagnostic confusion. Lateral curvature, bowing, of the femur. Anterior curvature of the tibia. Radiograph and isotope scan of the forearm of a 25-year-old woman who suffered a fracture of the radius after lifting her three-year-old son. The diffuse demineralization and altered trabecular pattern resulted in a differential diagnosis that included round cell tumor, infection, and adamantinoma. A biopsy showed this to be Paget's disease, less than 4% of individuals with Paget's present younger than age 40 years. Courtesy of Dr. Howard Dorfman. Paget disease-related signs include Tam O'Shanter sign Blade of grass sign Osteoporosis circumscriptor Jigsaw pattern bone or mosaic pattern bone Picture frame vertebra. Cotton wool appearance of bone. Banana fracture. Looser zones. Ivory vertebra sign. MRI. 
The overall signal characteristics are variable, likely reflecting the natural course of the disease process in different phases. Several major patterns of involvement have been described. Dominant signal intensity in pagetic bones similar to that of fat, most common pattern and probably corresponds to long-standing disease. MRI, relatively low T1 and high T2 signal alteration, also referred as a speckled appearance, second most common pattern, probably corresponds to granulation tissue, hypervascularity, and edema seen in early mixed active disease. Low signal intensity on both T1 and T2 images, suggesting the presence of compact bone or fibrous tissue, least common pattern, seen in late sclerotic stage. Fatty marrow signal is usually preserved in all sequences unless there is a complication. Case courtesy of Dr. Chris O'Donnell, Radiopedia.org, RID, 16811. Bone scintigraphy, TC99 MNDP. Highly sensitive but not specific. Traditionally has been said to demonstrate marked increased uptake in all phases of the disease, although in the burnt out sclerotic quiescent phase uptake may be normal. Case courtesy of Dr. Alexandra Stanislavsky, Radiopedia.org. Bone scintigraphy, TC99 MNDP. Highly sensitive but not specific. Traditionally has been said to demonstrate marked increased uptake in all phases of the disease, although in the burnt out sclerotic quiescent phase uptake may be normal. Imaging features Remodeled cortices Loss of distinction between cortices and medullary cavity Long bone barring Barring of femur or tibia image Fractures Hip and knee osteoarthritis Osteitis circumscripta Cotton wool exudates in skull image Paget's secondary sarcoma Shows cortical bone destruction Soft tissue mass Case courtesy of A. Professor Frank Aylard, Radiopedia.org, RID, 2639 MRI May show lumbar spinal stenosis. Bone scan image. Accurately marks site of disease. Intensely hot in lytic and mixed phase. Less hot in sclerotic phase. CT scan. Cortical thickening and coarsened trabeculae. Case courtesy of Dr. Alexandra Stanislavsky, Radiopedia.org. MRI May show lumbar spinal stenosis Bone scan image Accurately marks site of disease Intensely hot in lytic and mixed phase Less hot in sclerotic phase CT scan Cortical thickening and coarsened trabeculae MRI May show lumbar spinal stenosis. Bone scan image. Accurately marks site of disease. Intensely hot in lytic and mixed phase. Less hot in sclerotic phase. CT scan. Cortical thickening and coarsened trabeculae. Case courtesy of Dr. Alexandra Stanislavsky, Radiopedia.org. Laboratory findings elevated serum ALP. Elevated urinary collagen crosslinks. Elevated urinary hydroxyproline, collagen breakdown marker. Increased urinary N-telepeptide, alpha-C telepeptide, and deoxypyridinolin. Normal calcium levels. 
Differential diagnosis for skull lesions consider hyperostosis frontalis interna, thickening of the internal table of the frontal bone, fibrous dysplasia, different age group. Fibrous dysplasia usually affects the outer table more prominently. For spinal lesions consider vertebral hemangioma, usually finer trabecular markings in hemangioma than paget related changes. Treatment non-operative. Observation and supportive therapy. Treatment for asymptomatic Paget's disease. Physiotherapy, NSAIDs, oral analgesics. Medical therapy aimed at osteoclast inhibition. Bisphosphonates are first-line treatment for symptomatic Paget's. Oral, alendronate and resedronate. Etidronate disodium, didronal. Older generation medication. Inhibits osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Cannot be used for more than six months at a time. Intravenous. Pamidronate, zoledronic acid, zometa. Newer generation medications that only inhibit osteoclasts. Disadvantageous in that they only come in four. Treatment. Calcitonin are second line, after bisphosphonates. Causes osteoclasts to shrink in size and decreases their bone resorptive activity within minutes. Administered subcutaneously or intramuscularly. Teriparatide is contraindicated in Paget's disease due to risk of secondary osteosarcoma. Operative treatment. Total hip slash knee arthroplasty. Indications. Affected patients with degenerative joint disease. Technique. Treat pagets with pharmacologic agents prior to arthroplasty to reduce bleeding. Outcomes. Greater incidence of suboptimal alignment secondary to page toid bone. The most common complications include malalignment with knee arthroplasty, bleeding with hip arthroplasty. Operative treatment, metaphysial osteotomy and plate fixation. Indications, fractures through pathologic bowing of long bones, impending pathologic fracture of long bone with bowing. Complications of the disease. Osseous weakening resulting in deformity and pathological fractures. Increased risk of osteoarthritis. Hearing loss. Sensory neural hearing loss. Compression of the vestibulocochlear nerve in the internal auditory canal. Loss of bone mineral density of the cochlear capsule. Conductive hearing loss. Fixation of the middle ear ossicles. Complications of the disease. Neural compression. Cranial nerve paresis may occur. Basilar invagination may occur in advanced cases with hydrocephalus or brainstem compression. Secondary development of tumors for example osteosarcoma, 1% of cases, which is often highly resistant to treatment and giant cell tumor in the skull. High output congestive cardiac failure. When bone involvement greater than 15%. Rapid bone formation slash resorption can lead to left to right shunting and decreased peripheral resistance. Complications of the disease. Hyperparathyroidism, tilde 10%. Extramedullary, hematopoiesis. I would like to thank Professor Ahmed Turan Aden who contributed my orthopedic oncology knowledge and changed my life.
Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.